Hello friends, so today's video is going to be some anticipated book releases for this upcoming season. What I did at the beginning of the year is I actually broke up my anticipated releases into two videos. One was for January through half of February, and then I did the last half of February through March. And so I'm going to do something similar for these. I'm going to break it up into two, follow a similar model. I'm going to mention April through a little bit of May, and then the next video will cover the rest of May, and then, oh my gosh, June. Oh, and then that we're halfway through the year. Anyway, so <laughs> I, I'm going to be talking about the ones that are April through May. For these two videos, the last time I found a lot of you really appreciated, I put the books on the screen and I had it where it was really big and then the release date and information about the books and a lot of you seem to really enjoy that. So I'm gonna structure this same video that way, but I would love to know your input because this time around, I'm gonna kind of remove myself and just do a voiceover. So that way the focus is entirely on the books. You can take screenshots while you're watching if there's one that catches your eye. But if in the future you're like, I actually prefer when you're in it as well, just let me know. The first two I'm gonna mention, The Stardust Thief and Kai Kai are actually two I already talked about in a recent video. They're books that are coming out through Orbit. I did an entire video dedicated to some new voices in fantasy that Orbit has kind of been shining a light on. So if you're interested in these two books and hearing a little more about them, I'll have that video linked down below. But just really quick, wanted to mention them just because they are gonna be coming out within these next couple of months. Next, we have In a Garden Burning Gold. This is projected for April 5th. All of these release dates are subject to change. That's always the case, but I'd say even more so now, just given a lot of things getting pushed back and published so be on the lookout. Some of these release dates might not end up being exactly the same, but the synopsis for this one I think sounds really interesting. It says, twins imbued with incredible magic and near immortality will do anything to keep their family safe, even if it tears the siblings apart. I know a lot of you really like seeing really great sibling bonds or maybe not so great sibling bonds in books, but the more in-depth synopsis says, Rhea and her twin brother Lexos have spent an eternity helping their father rule their small, unstable country, using their control over the seasons, tides, and stars to keep the people in line. For a hundred years, they've been each other's only ally, defending each other and their younger siblings against their father's increasingly unpredictable anger. Now with an independence movement going around and their father's rule weakening, the twins must take matters into their own hands to keep their family and their entire world from crashing down around them. But other nations are jockeying for power, ready to cross and double cross, and if Rhea and Lexos aren't careful, they'll end up facing each other across the battlefield. So I like the uh, potential for these siblings to be on opposing sides, but also just in general, the mention of they have control over seasons, tides, and stars sounds really, really cool. And then also uh, to keep their people in line does not sound so cool, but in a book setting, I also would love to see how that unfolds. After that, we have a couple of sequels that are coming out. We have Hunger of the Gods and Fevered Star. Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn is the sequel to Shadow of the Gods. I'm sure most of you watching this are aware of Shadow of the Gods. It was a really big release last year. And I don't want to say too much about Hunger of the Gods, of course, because it is a sequel and I don't want to spoil anything about the first one for any of you. But the first one has three main perspectives and it is really Nordic inspired, but definitely still a fantasy world, very much its own story, its own characters, its own plot lines. And I quite enjoyed it. I would say it's a little bit of a slow start, but it was really interesting to see the characters' paths as they went about and also trying to figure out how they were all going to come together. In general, if you want to see a little bit more about Shadow of the Gods, I'll have a video linked where I talk about it a little more in depth. Fevered Star is the sequel to Black Sun, and I know that's another one a lot of us have been eagerly waiting for. So Black Sun is a book that I would say plays around with the chosen one trope in a very different way than I think a lot of us are accustomed to. It has a really fascinating mix of you fly through the book because it's just so gripping and you want to know what happens next, but then by the time you finish it, there is a hint of, I don't exactly know everything that's going on. <laughs> and it really makes you want the sequel because you want to learn more about these characters. You want to learn more about this world. You want to learn more about different prophecies. You want to know if your characters are actually good or bad, because in some ways I would say that's not exactly clear in the first one. But the characters really, I think, shine a lot in Black Sun. I think the setting as well, the setting is very different than a lot of other 
fantasy stories. I have a whole chat that I did for Black Sun with a friend of mine, Jade, from Bedtime Bookworm. So if you want to see our thoughts, maybe you have read it and you wanted to hear more about it, I'll have that linked. Next up, we have Electra that originally I had seen the release date for April, but I believe it is actually May 3rd. And this particular book is written by the same author who wrote Ariadne. It is a retelling of a Greek story. And I think this author's thing is taking characters in these tragedies or characters in this mythology and then finding the ones that don't necessarily have as much of a voice or there's not as much about them and then showing the stories we've seen before but from their perspectives. And so with Electra, I'm going to go ahead and still read the synopsis for you. A bloodline tainted by a generational cycle of violence and vengeance. This is a story of three women, their fates inextricably tied to this curse and the fickle nature of men and gods. If I had to guess, I would say I bet this one is going to end up on the Goodreads nominees, the Goodreads Choice Award nominees. I found Ariadne through the Goodreads Choice Award nominees last year, and I just think Electra's going to be on there too. But moving on now to Book of Night by Holly Black. I know this is one that so many people have had on anticipated releases. The quick little tagline at the top says, a modern dark fantasy of shadowy thieves and secret societies in the vein of Ninth House and the Night Circus. And honestly, that's not the biggest sell for me because I didn't love Ninth House, but I did enjoy the feel of Ninth House and the atmosphere. And if that's what they're comparing it to, and also the secret societies aspect, then I still have high hopes. But the synopsis for this one says, in Charlie Hall's world, shadows can be altered for entertainment and cosmetic preferences, but also to increase power and influence. You can alter someone's feelings and memories, but manipulating shadows has a cost with the potential to take hours or days from your life. Your shadow holds all of the parts of you that you want to keep hidden. A second self standing just to your left, walking behind you into lit rooms, and sometimes it has a life of its own. Charlie is a low-level con artist working as a bartender while trying to distance herself from the powerful and dangerous underground world of shadow trading. She gets by by doing odd jobs for her patrons and the naive new money in her town at the edge of the Berkshires. But when a terrible figure from her past returns, Charlie's present life is thrown into chaos and her future seems at best unclear and at worst non-existent. Determined to survive, Charlie throws herself into a maelstrom of secrets and murder, setting her against a cast of doppelgangers, mercurial billionaires, shadow thieves, and her own sister, all desperate to control the magic of the shadows. With sharp angles and prose, Holly Black is a master of shadow and story stitching. It's funny because when they get down to the details of this one, I... I'm like, all right, I mean, I'm going to find all that out when I read it, I'm sure. But I actually feel like the slightly more vague world building and magic aspects of the story are what are pulling me in. It's what I'm interested in. So hopefully it lives up to that really awesome magic and world building premise. Last for today, we have Juniper and Thorn. So pretty much everything on this list thus far has been adult fantasy, where Juniper and Thorn, I'm a little unsure because I thought another book by this author, The Wolf and the Woodsman, was adult fantasy. It read like adult fantasy to me in a lot of ways. I thought a lot of the themes were more mature, but a lot of other people thought it was YA, and not only that, but they were like, oh, it's classic YA, which I don't agree with, but I just wanted to share that, and also that I don't actually know if Juniper and Thorn is YA or adult. It's set in the same world as The Wolf and the Woodsman, though. So whatever you felt, if you have read that one, Whatever you felt toward it, I'm guessing that Juniper and Thorn is going to have that same sort of tone. But either way, the synopsis for this one says, A gothic horror retelling of the juniper tree set in another time and place within the world of the wolf and the woodsman, where a young witch seeks to discover her identity and escape the domination of her wizard father. Side note, I have no idea how to say this character's name, and it's in the synopsis a lot, so I'm sorry for butchering it. But it says, Marlin Chen and her sisters live with their wizard father in a city shifting from magic to industry. As Abya's last true witches, she and her sisters are little more than a tourist trap as they treat their clients with archaic remedies and beguile them with nostalgic charm. Marlin Chen spends her days divining secrets in exchange for rubles and trying to placate her tyrannical, xenophobic father who keeps his daughter sequestered from the outside world. But at night, Marlon Chen and her sisters sneak out to enjoy the city's amenities and revel in its thrills, particularly the recently established ballet theater, where Marlon Chen meets a dancer who quickly captures her heart. 
As Marlon Chin's late night trysts grow more fervent and frequent, so does the threat of her father's rage and magic. And while the city flourishes with culture and bustles with enterprise, a monster lurks in its midst, born of intolerance and resentment and suffused with old world power. Caught between history and progress and blood and desire, Marlon Chin must draw upon her own magic to keep her city safe and find her place within it. Something that The Wolf and the Woodsman did was it kind of combined a lot of real folklore and this clashing of different peoples from actual history. And I'm guessing that this one's gonna kind of do that as well, especially because it takes place within the same world. But in general, I really like that, the shifting aspect in stories. It's one of my favorite things I've found is when you have a city or a country or just in general, the world is on the brink of discovery or on the brink of technological advancements, or in some instances in fantasy, the either getting rid of magic or using magic in a business-like way. And it looks like this one's going to have that. It's one of the first things. It says a city shifting from magic to industry. I really love that theme in books. So really excited about this one. I think similar to Book of Night, the nitty gritty of the synopsis. I'm like, all right, I don't, whatever. (laughs) I'll figure that out as I'm reading it. But it's the world building aspects that I think sound really fascinating. Be on the lookout for a World Hoppers video that's going to also talk about some spring anticipated releases because I'm sure they're going to talk about other ones that I didn't talk about. And if you don't know what World Hoppers is, I think most of you do. It's a collaborative channel I started. Some of my friends went ahead and did a spring anticipated releases. So that'll be up very, very soon. And like I said, a lot of them are going to mention a lot of books that I did not. That's it for April and the first half of May. Let me know which of these are ones that you are the most interested in. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye.